pregame moves. So, we're back here with uh, game two between uh, Happy Men uh, and Auspicious Team. Uh, Happy Men managing to pull out the, the win last game, uh, putting them ahead in this series so far, but with the best of two, it's still all to play for, uh, as a draw could come out. <coughs> uh, I'm a Digital Unicorn. And I'm designer Taz, and that faceless void was badass. Yeah. <laughs> he was very, 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 very fat. He was indeed, even even though he got caught a lot. Like, yeah. a lot. Just unable to punish, uh, unable to to continue to punish them. Uh, and in those team fights, it was just very, very difficult. They, they would manage to kill off the void, but then still suffer losses themselves, and uh, and that led to the momentum always staying in the favour of uh, Happy Men. And that's that's the thing. That's that's the the, the thing. Right, someone's not loading. Um, yeah. When you have a lot of stuns. Um, Hold on, he's got it. Lovely. When you have a lot of stuns. There's there's pretty much nothing you can do. Uh, and especially with it being captain's draft, that just all comes down to the pool. Uh, the draft can be very very outrageous uh, sometimes. Oh, uh, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, the the picks and bands come very 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 fast and loose. So let's. Uh, let's Turn try. on the hood, by the way. Um, yes, yes, I will do. And remind me after the draft as well, because I've got to switch it over. So the okay, so mix yeah. assassin banned out by Happy Man. Uh, he, he was proving to be quite difficult last game. Uh, for auspicious team, Uncle Drippy very proficient on that hero, but obviously not wanting to deal with that again. Okay, here's what I see in this hole. I see a wizard. <laughs> I, see a, I see a tusk. And I see a disgusting part that could be a tide hunter, tide hunter uh, uh, in the Asian team, as we saw earlier. Yes, today. yes. Yeah, oh, tide hunter yeah. in the Asian team worked very, very well. Um, but that's an invoker coming out. I and know. I gotta say, it's uh, a wizard. <laughs> the most. Like, the most for me, the most and versatile hero on Dota. And thing that I was going to talk about in this draft pool is the battle of the supports. Because I want to see Vengeful Spirit Rubik Visage Trilane for the wins with Farm and Vengeful Spirit and we're going to win the game. <laughs> you need to prepare yourself for the Shen. <laughs> it could be coming out, you're quite right. Um, it's going to be... Happy yeah. Yeah. Because they have a, a, like a, a pushing spread going on. Yeah. Like they have Invoker, you have Lycan. I think they might be able to pull it off. Either that or uh, an Enigma. Enigma would have been great because if you can grab a good black hole hmm. with Invoker on your team, yeah. and you can tr just toss a meatball in there. Oh, into, into the Disruptor Cloud at the same time? That's a lot of team fight. Meanwhile, there's a crazy wolf going around touching people's <laughs> bodies. <laughs> Oh, and in the game that that never was the game, the game that was lost uh, due to due to some errors on my part, uh, the Lycan with the level one rush came out. Yeah, we got to see that. Uh, Auspicious team just going out for some for some really really so solid Boring. solid 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 is the word we use. Oh, Designed yeah. solid. 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 That's it. Sorry. My not cra not, not crazy <laughs> heroes uh, with the Dragon Knight and the Juggernaut. Um, they've got a nice little, nice little support duo there. We could see dual lanes, uh, perhaps a Dragon Knight mid. Here's, here's what I think about Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight mid is <coughs> such a solid hero. It's true. He's a really solid hero. He goes into mid. He probably will not fail because his damage is okay. Uh, he can grab a bottle, have some regen, and if the, the the opponent gets out of the mid lane, he gets to grab the tower with his ultimate mm -hmm. done. But he's the most Boring hero <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Speaking of not the most boring hero in the world, Centaur War Runner picked up by Happy Men. This is going to be fun. Tracking that I movement won't. speed with the camera—that's going to be brilliant. I want. I want to have. I want this draft to have my babies. This is all I'm going to say. <laughs> so much team fight and Centaur War Runner, because this could be like. Invoker mid like and his roster dual the enigma on the jungle and centaur war runner on the offline because it's still a little legit. Nice ass nice has been playing it a lot. Yeah. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think. I mean, it, they've got Tidehunter, which is probably like the best hero uh, for uh, counter team fight. Yeah. Still. Just 
it, when Centaur and Enigma both get level 6, Enigma doesn't even need a blink. Just charge straight in. True. Yeah. So, uh, let's introduce the teams quickly uh, as we start. Uh, and free. you forgot to remind me to go into match mode, but I'm going to do it myself. Oh boy. <laughs> 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 and uh, for Happy Men on the Radiant side, we've got Standing uh, on the off lane, Centaur War Runner, to, uh, it looks like JT uh, on the mid Invoker, Katadea yeah, on the jungle, Enigma looking to deny uh, one of the first creeps on the mid, uh, Dr. Ogus uh, on the uh, Disruptor, uh, safe lane support, uh, and Jack. Uh, on the safe lane farming lichen. Okay. And for our dire side? On the dire side, on the off lane tide under we see Uncle Dreepberry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so good at English names. Uh, we see a drunk bear going for the boring, uh, sorry, Dragon Knight hero <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the mid. Uh, and we see some. Uh, some early aggression bubbles. coming out, but um, just looking at each other funny. You're just looking at each other and just be like, huh? <laughs> we see you. And we also see uh, on the Vengeful Spirit, Tuggles, um, and LV on the Rubik, and on the Carry uh, Juggernaut, we see Rainfire. Rainfire, yeah, yeah. Uh, going for the aggressive trailing. Uh, I mean, this could be really good for them. I think it's a really good decision going for this aggressive yeah. trailing. When it comes to trailings, um Auspicious team showed me last game that they can do it. They they they, they had a very effective trial lane to begin with. They secured the farm on the Weaver uh, and made sure that it was that, that um that they won that lane. Um, so uh, this hopefully will work out a bit better for them. Um, but Jack, in the moment, he's on his own. He gets thrown out the stun from the um, vengeful spirit. He gets lifted up and he's going to go down to the first blood. The blade fury coming out from the from raining fire there on the on the juggernaut. It's just so strong early game, and with dual stuns in the lane, um, and I, I would say that's a one lane already. Yeah, um, that's the thing why I said that it would be so good for them to go, uh, because they would not never grab kills on the center or runner. Yeah. At least I feel like they well, wouldn't. Saying be that, <laughs> standing incredibly low there, uh, up on the top lane. Uh, I think like they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to grab kills. And mm. at least with <laughs> all the, they're on the side of us, I don't know if they should go in or not. Yeah. Um, at least this way they can grab kills um, because the dual lane is not that strong. I mean, yeah. you, have a, you have a lot of rats coming from this route there, uh, but yeah. I don't know. Lycan yeah. is a little bit yeah. piece of paper. Yeah, the, that's the issue that I've found with Lycan is early game. It, like that, the reason that he jungles is because that he c he <laughs> he can't take any harassment in lane. Uh, Enigma's had a lot of his uh, had the safe lane camp blocked, uh, and now he's struggling against uh, the the Wildering Ripper, which I know is a personal hate any of enemy of mine when it comes to jungle Enigma. And some lovely <laughs> lovely mud golems coming out for him in the uh, in the other medium camp there. He's gonna have to head over towards the mid. Uh, speaking of mid. Yeah, I was just looking at mid, and I was thinking, huh, must be really boring playing this Dragon Knight. Because, <laughs> like, um, you can pro uh, arrest um, Invoker Mug because of his range, yeah. and you'll get harassed because of the Exhort. Yeah. Because uh, he went the Exhort. Yeah. And he went, okay, it's a good decision when you start in this game. Yes. I don't think Quaswax would ever good, at least. And Jack is getting absolutely problem. nothing from this lane. Uh, Auspicious team perhaps learning from last game that if they give Jack free farm that he, he tends to do things. Um, but yeah, he's just having to cut through the trees there to get into experience range with his Quelling Blade. Uh, which is not going to be enough. The lane control coming out from uh, from uh, Auspicious team is, is quite strong. And this Tide Hunter, I don't know, I think I need to see what he's doing because he's just continuously putting, putting uh, the Centaur War Runner low. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's happening there, but it's the, and it's a battle of the passives, damage return against so. uh, Kraken Shell. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Um, but yeah, I'm very. I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be a lot of action. Yeah. But I think that a team auspicious made sure that that wouldn't be too much. Yeah. Because they don't want things to stop going their way. Yeah. Dragon Knights filled his bottle and drunk, drunk, drunk it up, and then sent it back. 
Vegeta, he's just got the f three quads. He's going to regen quickly up from that fire breath. And, uh, oh, aggression going in. Rain of fire there. Caught up by the static storm. Uh, it's going to take some harassment damage. Uh, and the wolves are popped, and they're just going to have to jungle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard. LV, though, caught out. He's laying down a sentry ward. The wolves are on him. The static field comes out, but he manages to just to escape out of the range of it. Scatterday yet's coming in with a stun. He's going to go down if he's not careful. Jack lifted. Caught out and down. Why would you go? Yeah. Like I literally can't find the reason why <laughs> you would should go against that Tryline. Once it's just the uh, the blink is on the kill the, the bloodlust comes up. Look, that Rubik was so low, man. That Rubik was so low. Nah. <laughs> that tunnel vision, man. That tunnel vision. Stop having tunnel vision. Uh, I just I don't understand really because the Nemo had. Like no mana. Um, oh, so <laughs> Centaur Warren is having a terrible time, so they're gonna send up the send up the Lycan to try and face off against this tide hunter. Who's just gonna walk up to Jack and hit him. And I think it, it no, I think it should work better. Yeah. Really, if you ask me, because uh, Jack has a, like a high damage. Yeah. So he's gonna last it really easily. He's gonna deny easily against Tide Hunter. And Tide Hunter can only like anchor smash mm. from time to time. A bottled haste rune on the Dragon Knight. This could be interesting because if he levels up uh, Dragon Tail, that's when a haste rune starts to become very effective on him. Uh, an interesting build coming out from JT. He's got just the the value point, if you can call it that, in the Exort, and he looks to be going more Quasworx. Don't really understand why. Because when you have like all in your in your team, when he uses I mean, the cold snap. Doing a lot of harassment damage to a drunk bear, but carry on. I mean, I mean it's one of those things like um, with uh, Invoker, uh, it's all about play styles and how you feel comfortable playing. Thuggles, though, so going in on Jack at the top. Uncle Drippery there, throwing out the anchor smash. The scream used, but it's not enough to bring him down. Sorry, that was a that was a rotation no, no. coming up. Wave of Terror used to, to almost bring him down, but perhaps should have come slightly before the anchor smash. It would have been maybe done more damage. Uh, and they've just rel rotated again to. To just keep applying pressure to Jack, they, 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 they saw the rotation, they were like, no, you're not going to have farm. Uh, meanwhile, the push bottom uh, continues. Kind of yet with the Enigma and standing. Uh, Dr. Rogue is pushing down uh, this tower with the Eidolons. Um, and not much defense coming out from uh, Auspicious Team. Rain and Fire just content, content to continue last hitting. He's uh, finished up his phase boots and he's got f uh, 500 gold in the bank. What do you build as a as a juggernaut this game? Standard Battle Fury? Uh, I, I don't think you, sh you should go for Battle Fury because you have so much early game. I think you should go for some kind of early game damage item. Even like uh, a Sanjin Yasha wouldn't be bad at this point. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the Isolator is always cool. You can go crits if you want. Like, <laughs> crits at this point is so, so, so cheap. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, not too, I'm not too much of a juggernaut player, so I can't say too much. Juggernaut for me is like Chinese, I don't, I don't really understand it. Agonims, Agonims, that's all you gotta build. Uh, the push is gonna continue on the top lane. This tower is probably gonna fall uh, this time around. The glyph. Here's what, you, here's what you build on Juggernaut you build Basket Madness, and you build Agus, <laughs> Agus, 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 Agus. Uh, And after that tower falls, the support is, uh, rotations are going to come. Dr. Ogre's lifted up, brought it back in down, and but the static field perhaps might last long enough. He's taken a lot of tower hits, and the fade ball uh, has left him quite low. Um, standing though, going into the trees, is this a mistake? Or is LV being very, very aggressive here? He's very far forward. His entire his team is not within the static field, thrown out to just prevent any uh, following. <laughs> and Jack's just had to go into the jungle. Did you know that if you build a, a Mask of Madness and if you click Mask of Madness before you ult it, you get extra, um, uh, extra, you know, right clicks? Yeah. Standing lifted up by LV uh, and Rain of Fire throwing out the blade for it and chasing down standing, but the damage returns doing enough. In, enough. Uh, but the rotation coming in from Thuggles and Uncle Drippery, all that armor reduction and stun, it's, it's going to be enough to bring him down and. No support coming out from the, the from the, uh, the happy men heroes there that could have easily moved in to to perhaps save him, or even just let him know that that rotation was coming. I think the disruptor was a bad pick. I think that the disruptor like doesn't have a lot of playing presence. 
Aside from the, the casual arrest. This, which, uh, yeah. this draft is almost the, the opposite of the last draft, which was full of lockdown. This is almost barren of lockdown. Yeah. It's another, I think it's uh, one of those... Okay. Okay, JT. That is <laughs> an horrible in the MP. Like, horrible. Like, you couldn't go more horrible than that, sorry. <laughs> uh, I think he was hoping that the Malefice coming out from the Enigma would, uh, would slow him down a bit, but that Blade Fury, man. Magic community OP apparently. I've I've, I've, I've had people tell me that it actually wins uh, games. <laughs> Magic community, it's weird. Uh. But that's a double damage on Dragonite. He's just gonna try to push the tower. And here's the thing about Dragonite: he just goes to a tower with his ultimate and punches it. <laughs> but the rotation, yeah. <laughs> the rotation's coming out uh, from the Enigma and the uh, uh, the Invoker should be enough to to prevent this push. Is that tower within the tower's within deny range, so I imagine they're gonna they're gonna deny that now. Or they're just gonna walk off and let Dragonite stand back up into the high ground and take it. <laughs> oh Dragonite he has he has a little bit of his ultimate left. He needs to let his team know that they've left the mid because the static field on two heroes there, the glyph used on the tower, but Dr. Ogres is in a terrible position here, he's completely surrounded by dire heroes. Uh and the rotation behind the EMP used up LV still managing to get the lift though on JT. The ravage coming out from Uncle Drippery. Uh, they've got a lot of damage coming out here. The black hole used Uncle Drippery and Thuggles caught inside. It's standing using the double edge to bring the raining fire though. Being chased down by the walls, taking a lot of crit damage. He's being bashed by the Malefice. And that was a very, very nice team fight for Happy Men. Thank you. Because I, I don't, I don't want to be like a fanboy, but I, I enjoyed this, this draft so much that I wanted to work. Yeah. I really want this draft to work because it's so team fight. It's all the team fight goodness you ever want. It's lockdown. It's invoker with the all the MP and the, the mid balls and all that. And that both both teams can go late game. Yeah. But they can both play early game really well. So. Dragonite bringing down the tower on the mid, and I think the key for that fight was um, Happyman finally um, had a fight on their own terms. They let Auspicious Team push, and they got the wrap around on them, uh, and managed to to get off all their abilities, um, uh, and just make sure that um, make sure that the fight went the way that they wanted. Up until now, they've they've been fighting in these positions that just they just don't feel strong. Well, like now they're they're all get, gathering the levels, sixes yeah. and sevens, and it's it's getting different, right? Yeah. And like Central War Runner is not only good for the, the initiation, but. So go swap onto Katadir yet. Yeah. Stun throwing out Raining Fire, coming in with the Blade Fury, but standing just throwing out the double edge, doing so much damage. And, Ka and the Enigma's going to escape. The Centaur will throw down so that they can chase. The Stomp's going to come out at some point, and the double edge to finish off from standing there. Very effective. The Wolves are chasing Uncle Drippery, uh, but he's got uh, quite a bit of movement speed coming out there. And Katadir yet is still alive. Yeah. That was a lovely timed ult from standing on the uh, the Centaur Warrener there, just in time to, to to help Enigma escape from that Blade Fury. Um, and they're gonna go for the tower. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they have the push. Ta the pushing. Oh my God! No, Cutter there needs to back. Yeah, he's about to get caught. Uncle Jeffrey's about to get caught out. Thuggles throwing out the, the stun on JT, who's taking a lot of damage from the tower. He throws out the tornado uh, to keep himself safe. Standing lifted up by the L by LV. Um, yeah, they're going to continue to back over and just clear up this creep wave. They've got what they wanted. No deaths yeah. in, a t in a tower. It's uh, pretty, pretty legit. Good. This Dragon Knight um, man needs to, needs to come and fight with his team. Uh, really? Because here's the thing about Dragon Knight. At level 2 of his ultimate, it's okay. You have, you have, uh, you have the, like, the splash damage and all, it's pretty cool. But JT chasing down Drunk Bear on the mid with the, with the, uh, the Ghost Walk, but no, it's not gonna be, he's not going to risk it. Of course not, because if he goes, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a full mana with illusion dragon knight. He just, he basically just go dragon tails and breathe fires and <laughs> bam, he's dead. Cause like, yes. he has some okay damage on dragon knight, yeah. and I, I don't think he's gonna be like the, the, the a good change for the team fight. I think if he just no. keeps I think on pushing the towers, I okay. think the difference that he'll he would make is 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 a an additional stun. At the moment, they've got yeah. they've got a lot of lockdown, but just it, you could truly chain stun someone uh, with with the Dragonite. There, just the damage. Like he's got a lot of, a lot of early levels, uh, and it, and he's quite far ahead. It just makes sense, I think. He, he, I think he's just wanting to find his speak early before he fights. 
Yeah, he's picked up the missile hammer. Okay, I could agree with that, yeah. And I like how, how Jack went for the uh, full one summon, uh, so he can get to go to the jungle and actually farm stuff. Yeah. Because at this point he's just... Yeah. Dragon Tail used on standing, but he doesn't know that no. the entire Radiant team is stood behind him. Uncle Drippery there throwing out the Ravage, but the EMP gets used. A lovely black hole catching four heroes eventually. A drunk bear caught inside at the Tidehunter and the Rubik Melted. Thuggles being chased down. And meanwhile, JT is going to ghost walk up onto the hill, throw down the tornado, and then call Stomp to finish off. Rain and fire getting chased down now by the wolves and Jack. Uh, the metamorphosis runs out, uh, and they're not going to have the speed to catch up to him, but. Yeah, they were, they were going to have the damage to take this mid tower. And Just another they, they laugh, lovely black hole coming out from Katadir. Yeah. And imagine if um, he actually had the um, Zerto's ultimates there and if Tidehunter hadn't ulted it. Because if Tidehunter hadn't ulted it, that's why Tidehunter is so good against his lineup, hmm. that would have been like, they would just disappeared. They yes. would just become dust. Because the team fight was so good, the... the um, uh, the connected field coming from this router was like perfect. Yeah. And the black hole just grabbing four uh, eyes. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> the other team fight on this, so the yeah. on this is just out of uh, this world. Auspicious team are looking to contest this. Uh, the. Uh Juggernaut throwing out the ult there and now the Blade Fury bringing down the Disruptor and the Lycan. Uh, but the Invoker using the Tornado to keep free and Raining Fire is going to go down. Uh, the Indamage coming out for the Invoker there. Uncle Drippery chasing down using the Gush and the Anchor Smash. Standing uh, content to just <laughs> feed on supports. The Vengeful Spirit and the Rubik going down in the back lines. Uh, Uncle Drippery now chasing down uh, Standing uh, and JT. The Dragon Tail used on JT. They should probably finish off this Invoker instead of focusing on the incredibly tanky Centaur Warrener, but the ult gets used. Katadei gets coming on the back lines, he's throwing out the Malefice. The EMP gets used, burns a lot of mana, uh, but meanwhile the Drunk Bear's to just trying to go ham on this uh, Invoker. And he's going to escape because he's a Wax. He's a almost full Wax Invoker and you can just run. Was that another fight without a, a death from Happy Man? What, sorry? Was that another fight without a death from ha with who died on Happy? No, Lycan Disruptor died, didn't they? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's. Uh, yeah, that's. Oh, that's, that's, that's almost getting brought great. down by the brief fire. He was uh, a little too bold there with his uh, soul ring in the middle of the river. That's not great, but still, like, the only, people, the only person that survived was. Oh, no, Jack. Uh, he, Dragonite, right? Swapped out by the Vengeful Spirit. He's lifted up by the Rubik. What was he doing there? The Blade Fury to finish off from Raining Fire. That's an easy kill for Auspicious Team. That's just feeding, man. And I think it's going to be an easy rush. Because yeah. Now they have Dragonite's ultimate and they can just go in there and touch them. Touch and those walls are going to run out long that before the Aegis pops up. One of the biggest up. throws he could have done there. Yeah. Like, if he could have just went with his team, he would have. They, they almost have their ultimates up. Uh, except for the, the black hole. Yeah. Happy man moving bit. over here, but I think it's a mistake to try and contest it. The kinetic field thrown out, catching three. And then the, st the static storm coming out. The EMP Ouch. doing a ton of damage to no Raining Fire. Standing, blinking in. He's doing a. Uh, finishes off uh, Raining Fire with the. Uh, Double edge. Oh, lovely blink stomp from standing to doing so much damage. The three heroes bunched up. A drunk bear taking a billion damage from uh, the invoker. And they're just chasing him down now. Raining fire silenced up. Blink from standing. And just. That's a, that's okay. a team wipe. Full on beautiful because just that. That. that um that uh, EMP was beautiful, was perfect. Everyone was out of mana, uh, was very well positioned. The connective field initiation was seemed like it was it was a little bit of a rush, but yeah. it actually worked pretty well. Caught out three heroes and then the, the, the silence cloud coming down to... to yeah, just it forced the initiation and... Yeah, uh, yeah perfect. That, so that's an Aegis and a team wipe for, for the yeah. cost of a disruptor there, which is, which is more than acceptable, I feel. Here's the power of a team that actually... Um, Plays very well with the, with themselves, like, yeah. uh, and actually having a like a great draft, because yeah. uh, playing in capsule draft needs needs some um, flexibility, needs a, uh, some good team because um, they, they, you need some creativity. Yeah. You need to see what what you have. Yeah. You see of your opportunities and uh, you're relying on the you players more than the, uh, the the heroes. If you if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I don't know who's making drafts, so they're all, they're all making the same drafts with each other, but uh, 
the the, the idea of actually grabbing the the summons and trying to push mm. while having a great team fight was yeah. a so great idea. Yeah. Very very good. Uh, and hopefully this is what we're going to continue to see uh, throughout this tournament is oh no the radiant core is going to go straight past the smoked diet